With the launch of the new Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon trailer, everyone is losing their mind about this picture right here. Can you figure out why? It's Ruby and Sapphire, Archie and Maxi. What is going? Why would they down? We're in modern Pokemon. We're in the seventh generation of Pokemon. We're in the Alola region. We're bringing back all of the bad guys, and we downgrade the visual appearance. That ain't my man. When we look at Maxi and Omega Moon Alpha Sapphire, he seems refined. He seems more powerful, more calculating, more villainous. Old Maxi is just old and kind of bland. You know, I don't really see any kind of advantage there. Same with, same when you have Archie. You know, you look at this like these are old games, old designs. There really wasn't much fanciness going on back then. Why would Giovanni recruit the villains that don't even have access to Mega Evolution, that don't have as much experience, that don't even have as much power? What is going on here? Now, after thinking about it for a bit, it seems like there's actually a very valid and very interesting reason as to why it's the Ruby and Sapphire villains instead of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. And we have to kind of like take everything into consideration here. Because even though we don't have the full details, it seems like Giovanni wants to use the Ultra Wormholes to go into other dimensions where the evil villain team has been successful. Therefore, the leader is more powerful. And how do you stop it? You create the ultimate bad guy group of the ultimate most successful bad guys. I mean, we already see this in the trailer. We have Mewtwo. How does what what Giovanni has access to the Mewtwo and he's using it against us as the supreme leader? That is a that is a far take away from what ended up happening for the first Pokemon movie that Mewtwo rebelled. Giovanni couldn't control it, and then it ended up just escaping, and now it wanders around, becoming all Mega and stuff. And it seems like you know Giovanni's also going to be powerful enough to use the Mega Mewtwo. So Giovanni is is completely on top right now, and the same could go for all of the other leaders. So then why not Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire? That the primal forms of Kyogre and Groudon again. The Mega Evolution, it's so much more powerful than what we have access to in Ruby and Sapphire, then why don't we have the Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, Archie and Maxi? My theory is because they're dead. Sounds crazy, but let's hop on over to Pokemon Generations, because I think Pokemon Generations kind of tells the full story as to what could be going on here. Now, Pokemon Generations works here because we're talking about the video games, and Pokemon Generations is effectively an enhanced retelling of the game's events. And we can see that, what if there's another timeline, you know? What if there's a timeline where the hero arrives, but instead of actually defeating Courtney, we lose to Courtney? That since we're defeated, we don't have any chance of stopping Team Magma, and it seems like that's what Courtney's vision is referencing. And this vision, it seems, it seems absolutely ridiculous. This, I feel, tells the story even more, because look at how much power we have in the Primal Groudon. How can any person even imagine to obtain this much power, yet let alone control it, you know? We've always thought that when it came to Ruby and Sapphire, these are some pretty ambitious plans to reshape the world for your own control. And then as we see in the Pokemon Generations video, there's no way that Maxi can survive that. All of Team Magma's there, and they don't have enough power to control Primal Groudon, and as we can see, it is an immense amount of power. Like, look at that! It can shred an entire island. It is literally erupting with raw power. And I think that that could also be what is going on here. That Groudon, Primal Pokemon, are so impossibly powerful through their Primal Reversion, through the states that they were put in and through their capabilities that you just cannot catch them. And I think we could also see this with Primal Kyogre. So, I mean, Archie, he's just as successful. He awakens Primal Kyogre. He has all the power in the world, but the admin shows up again and says, dude, we can't do this. I went through it. The research says it's impossible. Everyone is going to die if you do this. And I mean, when you look at this right here, that's apocalyptic. Like, the world is over. If this is happening, that is GG. There is no way you can stop it. How are you going to approach a giant legendary primal reverted Pokemon that is surrounding itself in powerful water cyclones that also are surrounded by whirlpools. Like, that's just GG right there. And then we see, once again, Archie is not powerful enough to control Kyogre. He calls out to Kyogre. He even has the orb, and he's like, Kyogre, you must listen to me. I have this. I am your controller, you know? You need to do my bidding. And Kyogre's like, nah. Kyogre turns on him, starts attacking the ship, and once again, it kind of ends in something they can only assume leads to death. Pokemon's too powerful, absolutely no control, they get eaten. 
GG, they're dead. Now, this could just be a straight up flaw in every possible version of Archie and or Maxi. You know, that they just aren't powerful enough trainers, they don't have the right game plan, they might be blinded by their own mission too much to be able to realize that these Pokemon are unable to be controlled or they just don't, they're just completely incapable of controlling these Pokemon, therefore there is no chance for them to succeed. I mean, again, we look at Kyogre, it's like the world's over. The world ends and nothing can stop that right there. Now true, in the games, the trainer comes in and we catch them in a Master Ball or something and we're able to tame them. Now that's most likely the, just the games making us feel like really awesome protagonists and giving us the most godly plot armor ever. And when we just kind of break it down to the Generations timeline, to, to the, a more realistic Pokemon timeline, it just seems like, yeah, even if we do come in and catch, catch it with the Master Ball, that already removes any success that Archie and ha Maxi have. So if we're not in the picture, they can't do it and they die from it. And that's why we only have the Ruby and Sapphire, Archie and Maxi, because they that's not dealing with primal power. You know, they can control, they can handle Kyogre and Groudon. So I think that's something. I'm just going to just kind of label, you know, it's impossible. GG, they can't do it. And that's why we have these ones, because they die in every other situation. Now, if we want to kind of confirm this, we can go even deeper into the Pokemon lore and kind of tie it in with the Pokemon Adventures manga. Now, this could also explain why Archie and Maxi appear to be working together. You know, they're walking in tandem. They don't seem to be fighting each other. They seem to have joined forces alongside each other with Giovanni to make the stronger group. And this happened in the Pokemon Adventures manga to a degree. That, you know, they combine their powers and they realize, well, if they do that, then they can defeat anyone in their way. That there's no chance that someone can stop both of them, and then they can go and get the powers of both Kyogre and Groudon, and then kind of figure out what to do from there as they take over the world. And this is what ended up happening. Now, this is the point where we start getting into heavy spoiler territory. I know it's just the manga, and it's kind of old at this point, but the Pokemon Adventures manga is so incredible that I don't want to unintentionally spoil it for anyone, but what ends up happening is that uh, teaming up together they take down Wallace as well as the protagonist However, they are kind of undone by their own arrogance and greed and it appears that they have died Even though they actually end up in the distortion world So like their, their spirits are separated from their bodies things get pretty crazy But they end up coming back for Omega Ruby off Sapphire and what ends up happening is that they die they're not powerful enough, and after using up all their power, they end up fading away and dying. And this is after controlling both Primal Kyogre and Primal Groudon. However, this is not enough power to stop the Meteor. So it's kind of like some Delta Chapter stuff being mixed in as well, you know. One of the Meteor Fragments is too large. Archie and Maxi, they use up all of their strength. They use up all of Kyogre and Groudon's strength to try to destroy it. And in the end, you know, they end up fading away. They end up dying for the usage of that much power. That it ends up costing their entire soul their entire spirit because controlling these Pokemon is just that powerful and then in the end of the day Groudon and Kyogre they use up all their energy as well and they don't and they they're unable to keep their primal reversion and remember this is still the Delta chapter this is Omega Ruby not Sapphire this is more modern Pokemon so even though it seems like having the newer versions of Archie and Maxi would be better it just seems absolutely impossible with Pokemon generations doesn't happen Omega Ruby not Sapphire we end up stopping them and then even going into the manga just kind of shows that no nah, they, they die it's, it's over for them it's GG there's nothing they can do about it therefore we have to get the simpler version we have to get the older version of them and then that's how we can bring them back for Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Now it is a pretty crazy theory, you know, trying to bring everyone together, trying to like put a mark on their success and stuff. Now alongside of this, there were also a lot of comments talking about Cyrus because they were like, wait a second, if Giovanni's trying to bring the ultimate team together, how did they get Cyrus or why would they get Cyrus? Because he seems so content because technically he succeeded by making it to the distortion world, right? And even this in Pokemon Generations, you know, he seems happy that he has the distortion world as something he could potentially call his own and Giratina doesn't seem immediately ready to destroy him so he's just like don't come looking for me kind of I kind of it, it went away from the plans but I mean it kind of worked out for me in the end so I'm happy here even though that's still failure you know this version of Cyrus the version of Cyrus that we've seen and know is not a successful one as we see you know Giratina was able to free Palkia and Dialga in the other games you know we have our intervention we're able to stop whatever Cyrus is trying to pull whether it's Diamond Pearl or Platinum version but what happens if he is successful he's able to to use Palkia and Dialga and reshape the world. You know, he doesn't know that his failure can still turn into success, so if he doesn't fail to begin with, then he's still an incredibly successful version of himself. I think he's still eligible to be kind of picked for Giovanni's ultimate rainbow dream team. So that's kind of like the weird thing that we're getting into. Like, you know, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, 
they already brought in the alternate reality, multiverse, extra dimensions, crazy shenanigans that are possible when it comes to Pokemon, and then I guess this just kind of extra confirms it, you know? You just kind of pick these people up from all different timelines, they have all kinds of different legendary Pokemon, you get to get legendary Pokemon from different worlds, different timelines, and it all kind of comes together, and then we end up with this. But I think, I think this is a pretty solid answer to one of the biggest questions that we've had so far. Why is it Ruby and Sapphire, Archie and Maxi? Because they die every other situation. So if you guys enjoy the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.